I hear the train coming, rolling around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. But I'm stuck in false in prison. Time keeps dragging on. But that train keeps rolling on down to San Antonio. Just a baby, Mama told me, son, always be a good boy. Don't you go and shoot your gun. But I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. When I hear that whistle blowing, I hang my head. There's rich folks eating in fancy dining cars, probably drinking coffee and smoking their cigars. But I know I had it coming. I know I can't be free. But those rich folks keep moving. That's what tortures me. Music was very important to him. He loved singing and playing. Um, did it right back from the time he was a teenager. Um, he was very kind, very giving. Always wanted to give back and help anyone, any way he could. Uh, back in the 70s, he played a regular gig at the Derrick in the Chateau Gay Room. He was like their house band. Um, I remember as a child listening to him play at the Elks. We were allowed to stay till 8 o'clock and listen to him, and then we had to leave. They'd kick us out, but he did that regularly, too. Um, then in later years, as he was retired, he did it more as a hobby, but he never, he never stopped. Even in his garage at home, it's full of guitars and musical equipment. He has a stage built in his garage where they would just go out there and jam whenever. So whoever came by that had any musical inclination, they would go out to the garage, and they'd be playing for hours out there. That lonesome whistle blow all my blues away. He was very, very dedicated, no matter where he was, if he was traveling or working still or had other things going on, he always made sure that the weekend of the United Way he would be available to play, and usually for whatever times they asked him to. Sometimes, some years he filled in through the night, played till 2, 3, 4 in the morning, and you know, he was probably 70 plus years old already at that point, play till his fingers would bleed. One year he had, a, he had an accident with his gravel truck while he was loading gravel he pinched the ends of his fingers off and um, so they had to actually be sewn back on and that's all he was worried about was that he'd be healed in time to be able to play at the telethon and I'm sure they weren't completely and it probably wasn't hundred percent but there was no way he wasn't gonna do it Sunday 
A lot of people probably don't realize, though, how, how much he, he did. And he did it professionally for yeah. years. You know, fed his family. And then Junior grew up, like we all did, listening to that. Yeah. And, and Junior is probably even more so of a perfectionist. Yeah. You know, so they, they would rehearse and rehearse and practice. They'd start months ahead of time yeah. practicing whatever songs they were going to do. More so that Junior would be comfortable with it. Because yeah. Dad could pick up a guitar and go anytime, yeah. any, anywhere. Yeah, like I said, not just the telephone, but many days the two of them would just spend out in the garage jamming, learning songs, and just spending time together doing what they both love to do. He'd want me to, come on, Kath, let's do a couple songs. You come up and do a couple songs with me. So yeah. we'd practice a couple, So, because I I have terrible stage fright. I get very nervous. And I'd say to him, Dad, I can't do it. I tried chicken out the last minute. I can't. I'm not going to. Yeah. You, you guys just go ahead, and I just want to watch. No, no, come on. And I'd hide behind that curtain, and it would be time for him, me to go on stage, and he'd, he'd look over at me, come on, and he'd smile at me. He'd always tell me beforehand, if you don't get the butterflies, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Even after all these years, I still get butterflies, he said. That's so awesome. you're supposed to. My dad would try to have a set list. He, he has, you wouldn't believe the briefcase he has full of songs. And the songs he could remember in his head. He couldn't remember what he did the day before, but he could remember words to songs. And he, I don't know how he narrowed it down and picked however many, but I think a lot of it was spontaneous. They would have a set kind of picked, and then if he was playing, and he would just start into another song, one that he felt, like whatever he felt at that time. So it wasn't always just set. Thank you. 
I want to mention that his his goal, he kept saying his goal, United Way has goals yeah. they set every year. His goal when he got diagnosed in January, his goal was I will be better, I'm going to beat it, I'm going to be better because I'm going to play at the United Way. I can't miss the telephone, I can't miss the telephone. So that was, he kept that in mind. It gave him strength a lot of days when he didn't want to get out of bed. He'd get up, I got to do my exercises, I got to get stronger, I have to eat more so I can do the United Way. That's my goal. That's my, we all heard it repeatedly. He really wanted to. That's why we're doing it. He's not here, so we're, yeah. we're doing it for him because he wanted to so badly.